A massive Category 3 storm is bearing down on the high seas, tearing through everything in its path. The seas roil with huge waves, boats bob up and down on the surface, and fishermen pray to whatever gods they know to get them through the voyage safely. And you're aboard a giant cruise ship enjoying a lovely dinner. Maybe afterwards you go down to the casino and try your luck. Yeah, cruise ships do seem like strange little oases in the middle of a sea storm, but how do these massive boats manage to survive bad weather? It's all in the design. When people buy tickets on a cruise ship, they're not just buying recreation, they're buying safety. They want to know that all their needs will be taken care of for the duration of the cruise, and this includes ensuring the passengers are safe. So cruise ships are designed to withstand all sorts of rough conditions, in ways past ships couldn't. During the heyday of sea travel, it was fairly common for ships to be lost at sea. Rough weather, a rogue enemy ship, or a collision with an iceberg could send the ship to a watery grave, with most or all of the passengers going with it. So what changed? Obviously, the most famous maritime disaster of all time, the Titanic, did not help. The sinking of the British passenger ship, the Lusitania only years later at the hands of a German torpedo, only made it clearer. Something needs to change. These were both hardy ships, ocean liners that were meant for long-distance travel. They could head from one end of the Atlantic to the other in a single go, but that also meant that they were sacrificing maneuverability for strength. If everything went right, they would be reliable, but if something went awry, there would be very little hope to save the voyage. The ocean liner was a reliable ship, but it was replaced by something better, and today only one ocean liner remains in service. The Queen Mary II is more of a relic of an older age of sea travel, and it's been replaced with a ship with a much higher rate of survival in case of emergency. The cruise ship is typically made of lighter material than an ocean liner, and they can be made much bigger. In fact, the Titanic was only 883 feet long. While the largest cruise ship today, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, is almost 1,200 feet long. While ocean liners focus on being sturdy, the average cruise ship has some hidden secrets inside that make it much more seaworthy. So what's hiding inside these floating cities? Cruise ships are often ridiculous. Only a small portion of the ship is below the waterline, and the top of the ship is a massive multi-level complex often containing thousands of staterooms, dozens of restaurants, and countless rooms featuring opportunities for recreation. It towers into the sky, looking very top-heavy. Yet for those people sailing through a storm, their cruise experience will be largely uninterrupted. Outdoor activities might be cancelled, and the outdoor decks might be closed to keep people away from the railings during rough water, but people on the inside will be able to enjoy their food, activities, and sleep with only some moderate turbulence. And a lot goes into making sure it stays that way. The design of the ship actually works in favor of keeping the ship afloat. That top-heavy nature of the ship means the ship is pulling down on the water providing a balance to the buoyancy that pushes it upwards. It's a tricky balance, and a big part of this is the ship's center of gravity. While the goal of the design of a ship is to keep the center of gravity in the middle, that's not always possible. Ships have a lot going into them, and the engines of the machines that keep it running weigh a lot more. That means the bottom of the ship will be heavier than the top half, no matter how tall the top half looks. And it's all about balancing that. If a ship is too bottom heavy, it's likely to keep sinking. If a ship's too top heavy, it'll be more unstable, which is less dangerous than a ship sinking, but nothing ruins a cruise faster than it toppling over onto its side. So designing a cruise ship is an extensive process that involves carefully balancing out its weight distribution and figuring out exactly how much you can build on top of the massive ship. The machinery being at the bottom keeps the ship's center of gravity lower, ensuring stability in the water. Stabilizer fins keep the ship from rolling too easily, and the ship is equipped with GPS devices and other modern navigation systems to ensure it avoids obstacles and remains stable. But what happens if an obstacle is unavoidable? Cruise ships will take detours to avoid storms when possible, but sometimes a storm comes out hard and fast. And that's why the ship relies on far more than its center of gravity to stay afloat. The design of the bottom of the ship has rounded edges, which makes it a lot easier for it to roll on the water and then restore its initial position. It also has a number of ballast tanks to keep it stable, which is something earlier ships lacked. These water-filled tanks provide additional stability and distribute the load evenly. So what's it like surviving a storm on a cruise ship? Surprisingly, fine. No system is going to be able to completely keep you from feeling the impact of a raging storm outside, but as long as you stay within the cruise ship, you're gonna be fine. People have described turbulence, but this is more like mild swaying than violent nausea-inducing shaking that you might have felt on an airplane or a much less seaworthy ship. In severe storms, the ship might stop to let the storm pass, but overall cruise ships can handle harsh weather in a way older ships could not. And this just does more than save vacations, it saves lives. Cruise ships are strong, but they're not invincible. 
They often have less hull strength than ocean liners, but better radar to avoid obstacles like icebergs. If they were to hit one, the odds are it would rip through the hull and cause serious damage to the ship. But not all disasters are created equal, and even in the worst case scenario, cruise ships are better equipped to survive a disaster than their cousins. Let's look at a tale of two disasters. Everyone knows the story, the Titanic hit an iceberg and sank. And then Jack and Rose didn't try to fit two people on that one board. But how much do we know about what actually went wrong with the Titanic? When it hit that iceberg, it ripped a hole in the hull of the ship under the water level at least 300 feet long, and that sent freezing cold water flooding into the base of the ship. As this primarily affected the back of the ship, it eventually sent it tilting upwards, leading to a massive breakage and making it much harder to evacuate. This led to a death of over 1,500 people, one of the worst peacetime maritime disasters of all time. Of course, the biggest culprit in the death rate was the lack of lifeboats. It was unsinkable after all, but the design of the Titanic didn't help. Now let's look at a modern day equivalent. The cruise ship industry is considered much safer than the old-timey seafaring industry, but that didn't help the residents of the Costa Concordia off Italy's coast carrying over 4,000 people on board in 2012. It was just kicking off a seven-day cruise when it struck a rock reef and tore a 16-foot gash into the ship's hull around 25 feet below the sea level. A very similar blow to the one that took the Titanic down to a watery grave. The ship began flooding, the engines and generators went offline, and the ship began to sink. But what happened next was very different. The ship began leaning heavily to its side and sank much more slowly. This allowed the crew to begin a hasty evacuation process, and thanks to a suitable supply of lifeboats, they were able to evacuate the passengers over a six-hour period. 34 people ultimately died, but most of the deaths were caused by the ship tilting and the passengers falling into the water. Three people were even rescued from the ship over 24 hours after it hit the rock, as the ship was sinking very slowly thanks to its design and the well-distributed ballast tanks. The Costa Concordia was ultimately scrapped, and it's one of the worst maritime disasters of the 21st century, but it was nowhere near as bad in terms of loss of life as the maritime disasters of the 20th century. So, are cruise ships foolproof? The answer is… almost. The Costa Concordia was one of the only total losses of a cruise ship in recent memory. Most of the worst maritime disasters in the 21st century are of passenger ferries, and while the Costa Concordia was certainly the most expensive, its loss of life was dwarfed by disasters involving much smaller boats. Cruise ships are designed to survive intense storms while minimizing its impact on the people inside, and in the event of a hull breaching disaster, it has enough safety features to allow time for a safe evacuation. While we have no evidence of what would happen in the event of a military attack, like the one on the Lusitania, and we hopefully never will, the modern cruise ship seems designed to give its passengers an easy and safe ride. Now they only have to worry about a few other things, like viruses spreading on board, be they norovirus or COVID. Plus, there's always the risk of the power going out and leaving you stranded on the open water for several days as the toilets overflow and the food runs out, like in the infamous poop cruise on Carnival Sunset. Plus, you never know who you're going to be seated next to at dinner, and if that one guy tells you one more anecdote about him yelling at Starbucks baristas, you might just wish for the ship to sink to the bottom of the ocean. Want to know more about the most infamous ship disaster of all time? Check out the sinking of the Titanic hour by hour, or watch this video instead.